Uh, what other speaker is? And anyway, I made some notes. We had a, we had a meeting last. Uh, by the way, who doesn't know me? I'm uh, Mitch's direct cousin. <laughs> so uh, all those children had to say hello to me. <laughs> what they never did, by the way. <laughs> and still today, which they have said about it. Anyway, our uh, good Mitch was born in uh, 1924. And just a little bit of double Dutch. It makes sense that she was born in 24, because my son was born in 1990, and he's 24. For that reason, me had to be born in 1924, 24. That's what that was. I don't enjoy that technical stuff. But I need my hanky because I'm a soup. Now, me is a very interesting lady, because she's born out of a Dutch lady and a Dutch person, but her grandfather from mother's side was, was German. He was actually a baron, aus dem Kamen. Although he was an orphan and taken out of the orphanage in Germany and came to, uh, to Roumont, so um, that's why the gratitude of the people is so very apparent. Um, so uh, the royal blood is very obvious. <laughs> um, at a young age of about two and a half, she moved to Belgium because uh, her lady, lady mother who was uh, the sister of my mother, uh, married a person, and um, he started a business in Leuven, in Louvain. And uh, that's where the terrible, not the terrible, the, the in interesting language skills for me come from. So when, uh, <laughs> one day Belgium, uh, no, a whole day Belgium, one day French, and one day Dutch school. So her French is like her Dutch. Anyhow, good Uncle Wim, uh, Mip's father lost his business in the Second World War by the Germans. And it's very remarkable because her name was Austin Kahn from the mother's side. From the father's side, her name was Munich. Yeah, so both German. So I don't know what the Germans did. Anyhow, <laughs> her, father, her father lost a lot of, uh, um, and her mother, a lot of uh, business and money and all that sort of stuff, which was very upsetting. But uh, me was very, very, as uh, Penny already mentioned, very adventurous. And uh, when the Second World was over, or about over, she walked from Leuven to our hometown uh, to visit uh, her through the other side of the family, uh, like my mother and her father and things like that. And um, yeah, so she was a very interesting woman, and she still is a very interesting woman only. Because she thought, oh, just walking to, to Europe, or to uh, Holland is not so interesting. So what she did, she stepped straight through a minefield <laughs> to a farm. And then the farm lady said, what are you doing? Where are you coming from? Oh, I come from there. <laughs> oh, you yeah, straight went through a minefield. And anyway, he didn't go up. And she's still with us. It's a great life. So she's an indestructible sort of a person. So I come to the indestructible person and think in a minute when we talk about her health affairs. <laughs> and that was in 1944-45, and in 1946, me and uh, mom and dad and two sisters came to uh, our hometown uh, without anything, because everything was lost during the bad war years. Lucky enough, my father owned one of the ruins in my hometown, was completely bombed by the Allies to get the Germans out. And he pinched a couple of bricks from the naval property and a couple of planks from the other naval property and built a little little home where uh, me uh, and uh, her parents and two sisters had it, uh, a temporary home. So that was in 1946. Soon after that, uh, me decided to do something else. She wanted to see and conquer the world. And uh, me was one of the first stewardesses for the Royal Dutch Airlines. Again, double Dutch because it is the KLM. Yeah. And everybody talks about Royal Dutch Airlines, so it doesn't make any sense, but yeah. Yeah, that's why we call it Double Dutch. <laughs> um, hang on, I have to do that with my cheat sheet. I was the wrong page, probably. Past this. Yeah, back, back to uh, the minefield, we had that. Yes. So she went to uh, the, the, signal, the, the little house that uh, my father tried to put together to her. And um, Mip started as a stewardess with the Royal Dutch Airlines. And, still too small for me, so she decided to go for a couple of years to Indonesia. That was in the, the late 40s, I believe, yeah. before she met her dear husband, uh, Ralph, Henry, Lou, or whatever. You know. 
And I mean, I know I called blue blue when I didn't know what blue blue was. <laughs> when I was eight, I knew that blue was blue. <laughs> I didn't know that was a person, but I thought it was a person, but it was a car. <laughs> oh, double dash again. <laughs> and then, then this, uh, this uh, remarkable thing came that. Uh, that they disappeared from her Royal Dutch Airline experience and moved from one of the most prestigious areas in Holland, Dassen. They moved to Australia. It was very sad for us to lose our beautiful uh, mid and blue. And um, the hard part was that we, we, we didn't understand what Australia was. <laughs> because, and, and I thought, yes, just seeing something. A farm of 3,000 sheep and thousands of hundreds of acres. I mean, that was impossible. I mean, in Holland, if you have hundreds of sheep, you have a big farm. <laughs> if you have four acres of land to grow vegetables, you have a big farm. I have four acres in, in Nusa, so uh, they could tell them how they can't believe it. <laughs> so anyhow, that was this, uh, this remarkable thing. And now we are here again to celebrate this uh, tremendous uh, uh, robotic uh, woman. <laughs> because she went through this terrible stage, and uh, so I asked her yesterday, I said, Meet, what, what is going on? Or how many hips and knees and whatever do you have? So in both uh, he, knee operations, both hips, and, and she walks actually quite charming. <laughs> Thank you, Meet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Nip's going to speak now. Who's going to speak? No, 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 no,